I want you guys to open your Bible to Luke chapter 8. We're going to get into our handout. But first of all, I want to... I want to talk to you guys about two things today. Obviously, on Wednesday night and what you heard in the recap was we're talking all year so far about power and going higher. Power! And the world has such counterfeits for a high. And so right. we talked uh, to, uh, several weeks ago about drugs. And then now we're talking about al- alcohol. And we're fixing to hit it hard, like even on our billboards. Just know. Let's go. Um, it's game Slamming time. like the weed situation. We're slamming it. Um, we're slamming it. So when it. you see it, just know. I heard it first. You heard um, it first right here. So yeah, I think the one, what I'm thinking is like, it's going to say, um, his pastor Dean are kind of like, you know, our minds kind of think, think alike, um, hit us up when you realize this doesn't work. And then like a weed symbol Ooh. and then choose life. Ooh, something thought provoking. Yeah. Something slightly hit confrontational. Hit us up when you realize this doesn't work. And then like this. Right. It's passive aggressive. Yes. Okay. Y'all, if, if Tristan isn't your good. friend, he, he should be your he friend. He should be. Just throw that out there. Let's just throw that out there. You, We're basically going to have a meet people that are better a meet than you for Tristan. Than cer- in certain areas so that you can basically, that's what Pastor Faith did. Hang out with all the smart people and use their smarts. Trey's going to be hosting a meet and greet for Tristan at the end of service today. <laughs> Trey, we're so glad you're part of the family, man. Amen. You're awesome. You bring hey, guys, such a good energy. Who has not completed all their take root classes Uh-oh. for youth ministry? Oh, youth snap. Group. Where are you at, guys? Y'all are in process. Have you, have you guys started, though? Yes, they've already started. If not, just jump right in. It's, yes, it's really you guys, easy. Is we, it four weeks or five weeks? It's actually four, but you can take a fifth as like just learning. Like a redo? God, just kidding. No, That's what like, I, I would be like, I need Understanding five. divine healing is so oh, important. Oh, powerful. So, you should do five. Okay. If you haven't done them all, do them. We want you guys to do them because we want you to be an official part of the family. Okay? Yeah. And encourage people to do that. Okay. It will help you. It'll be a blessing to you. Two things. Obviously we want to like debunk, um, you know, just the lie that partying and all that is fun. And, and so that's a part of it. But the other part of it is the power of your testimony. How many of you guys were excited to hear Laura's testimony? Like that encouraged you, right? It encourages you when you hear what God has done in other people's lives. And so Revelation 12, 11, write it down. And then we're going to read in Luke. But Revelation 12, 11 says that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So guys, victory is released in our life in two ways. And they'll put it on the screen. Victory is released in your life two ways. First of all, with what God did. Victory is released into our life with what God did. And what did God do? John 3, 16. He sent his only son to die on the cross so that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So victory is released into your life because of what God did. And what did God do? He sent us Jesus. That's God's part. That's the blood that that verse talks about. Revelation 12, 11. They overcame them by the blood. What blood? Jesus's blood. That's right. Jesus shed his blood and that released victory to us. But it's just like if I throw this bottle of water to Ryan. Hey, good catch. He has to catch it. Okay. So me releasing it to Ryan is only part of it. The other part of his success is him catching it. So good. Right? And how do we catch what God did for us? With our mouth. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord. So you get salvation that way and you get everything else that way. So we've got to voice what is ours. Just like he had to catch that, that's how we receive what God has done is with our words. So when Laura stands up here and she talks about what God has done in her life, that is a testimony. Everyone say testimony. Testimony. Right? And by doing that, she reinforces. See, so many believers walk away from things, but they don't ever talk about it. It's like they kind of keep it hidden. Mm -hmm. And then when they're going through a hard time, when they're frustrated or they're just having a bad day, they go back to those sins that they had been delivered from because they never vocalized it. Once you vocalize and say, I am free, 
that hits you in such a way that it's like, you don't want to go back to those things that used to hold you bound because you've already voiced freedom. Just like when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that positions you for heaven and not hell. So it's important that you say, you, and so many believers are embarrassed. They don't want to talk about what they used to do. Well, that's pride. That's pride. And so look at this story. This is Luke chapter eight. <clears throat> And we are going to start Luke 9, Luke 8, and we are going to start in I'm like making a fish noise right now. Like a Swedish goldfish? Uh, yes. Guys, let's start in verse 26. Luke 8, 26. They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time. And he did not wear any clothes, and he did not live any house, but he lived in the tombs. <sighs> When he saw Jesus, he cried out and he fell down before him with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with it? I'm like doing my best. Like that was demon voice. Powerful. What have I to do with thee, Jesus, your son of God, most high. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like it'd be good for your voice. I beseech you, torment me not. For he commanded the unclean spirit, verse 29, to come out of the man. Mm -hmm. For oftentimes it had caught him and he was bound with chains and in fetters and he broke the bands and he was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And when Jesus asked him saying, what is your name? He said, Legion, because many devils were entered him and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. But there was a herd of swine feeding on the mountain and they said, hey, put us in call us into those pigs so they went the devils out of him and it entered into the pig and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and they were choked that was the first instance of deviled ham <laughs> guys ever heard that joke that's a great joke that's the jokes aren't joke. getting any better that was a great so let me joke. say it again so you guys can laugh because you may not get another chance, okay? And you just laugh in faith. And you say, you know what? I'm grateful for my youth pastor. The youth pastor that I have is the youth pastor I have, okay? She may not know how to game. She may not know how to do a lot of things. But she has borderline stupid jokes. Okay, <laughs> so guys, when these devils were cast into this herd of pig, it was the first instance of deviled ham. <laughs> It's like it's like a, a way of a way of, it's preparing, a way of ham. preparing ham. Like, have you guys ever heard it's of like deviled a eggs? Like deviled eggs. Have you guys ever heard of deviled eggs? We call them angel eggs. Yeah, we call them angel eggs. Angel like eggs. Angel eggs. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Oh, she doesn't like mustard. What is? Raise your hand if you like angel eggs. Formerly I referred to as deviled eggs. Faith. Can we have a picture of angel eggs and deviled ham, please? Oh, for the joke was already bad, and now it's even worse because no one knows what deviled <laughs> ham is. All right. So, then they went out, verse 35, to see what he had done. And they came to Jesus, and they found the man out of whom the devils were departed. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now he has clothes on. Now he's in his right mind, and they were afraid. You pick now to be afraid? That's like me being afraid of you guys sitting here in your right mind at the feet of Jesus with your clothes on. I guarantee you that is not scary. If someone walks in here foaming at the mouth and talking like, <laughs> like that with no clothes, that's a little bit scary. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not, but the whole townspeople were afraid at this miracle. Right. And so... They were asking him, like, how, how did this happen? The whole multitude, verse 37, out of the country of Gadarenes, round about besought him. They, like, get out of the city. You want to kick him out now? Now that he's delivered, you want him to go? Guys, please write it down. It'll be on the screen. Religion makes no sense. See, people think walking by faith doesn't make sense. Walking by faith actually makes perfect sense. Yes, it does. Because God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke and it became like there's an order to faith. There is no order to religion. There's no order to religion. Jesus is healing people on Sunday, which would be Saturday for them, their Sabbath, and religious people are mad. That would be like me bringing somebody in here, laying hands on them because they were bound by whatever, and them getting healed, and Ali and Sasha and Hannah like stirring everybody up. 
this is so stupid. I can't believe our pastors would do this. I can't believe they would do a miracle on, on the Sabbath. We're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. <laughs> right? That's what religion, religion Crazy. makes no sense. Crazy. It's like the, when they threw the woman that was caught in adultery at Jesus' feet. How did they know? Mm, say that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, how did they know? Religion makes no sense. This man is delivered and now they want to throw him out of town. Not when he's crazy and running around in the graveyards with no clothes on. So that's weird, bro. They wanted him out. They were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now, when now the man out of whom the devils were departed came to Jesus that, me, that he might be with him, but Jesus said, "No, return to your own house." Everyone say your own house. Your own house. And show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way, and he published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto them. See, sometimes when we get saved and born again and on fire for God, or we make a stand, hey, I'm not, we, it's like we don't want to say anything to anybody. We want to run away from our family. We want to run away from our friends. And I'm not saying that we're not supposed to come out from our family and friends and be separate. I'm not saying 1 Corinthians 15.33 isn't true because it is. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says evil communications corrupt good manners. I'm not saying that it's not easier for people to drag you down to their level than you pull them up to your level. But you should be able to vocalize what God... So this man wanted to run away. I would want to run, want to run away too. Right. If everybody's trying to throw me out of the city and this man delivered me, I want to go with you. Like you've got the power. You helped me. I want to go with you. And you would think Jesus would be like, come on, come follow me. Yeah. I'll teach you how to be a fisher of men. But he didn't do that. He sent him right back into his own town. Right. And he said, no, you need to tell them what I did. Because sometimes it's like we have this idea, well, I want to be a missionary here and I want to go here and I want to go to Bible school. You don't even take advantage of what you have at your church right now. Ooh. So maybe it's not the call of God. Maybe it's you running from the responsibility of being who God wants you to be right here and right now. Mm. And so he sent him home. He said, no, you go back home. Why? Because the second way that we access God's victory is through your testimony. We overcome by the blood and then your testimony. So you, that's why I would say, that's why I would say, I'm not hooking up. I'm waiting for the person that God has for me. Now you might think that's a lot of pressure. It's not a lot of pressure. That didn't mean that I didn't have other friends that were guys. Right. Okay. I just meant that I didn't need to be exclusive with them and to kiss them and be physical with them to determine if they were the will of God for me. I didn't need to hang out privately with them in secret or hide in order to determine, mm, no. Yeah. I could do that in a fellowship of a bunch of people. Yep. I could tell. Mm, there were just, do you know that for me, like, I was very particular about guys' hands. And I don't want to be ugly. Do you like my hands? <laughs> totally. Because, guys, for me, my dad has very, like, um, like hands, hands a lot like Pastor Greg's. And some guys have, like, thin fingers, and that creeped me out. And if you have thin fingers, guys, you're not a creep, okay? Just do finger don't exercises. You, you're still growing. Or start playing the guitar until your fingers you're still are growing. super strong. You're still growing, okay? Maybe they'll get better. But it, it was like, it was just like a thing for me. And so I had only ever held a guy's hand. I never did anything else. But I remember thinking, my hand doesn't fit good in your hand. That was one of many things. Maybe I think your hand fits good in my hand. Let's see. My hand oh, fits yes. very perfect in oh, Greg's hand. Oh, interlocked fingers. Let's go, Woo! <laughs> okay, so do you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't need, because what happens is, is it's like, you just like their attention. Ooh, say And that, you're just PC. using them. Yeah. You're mm. just using them. Mm. But you're not attracted to them. Oh, snap. It's right? getting real up in this middle school service. <laughs> it's getting but real. But I vocalize that. I vocalize that. I do not go to parties. Because it's like you're leaving your options open. You know what I mean? I vocalize, no, I do not do drugs. 
No, I do not want to drink. I vocalized, I testified what I felt like God was doing in my life. Do you want to watch this? No, I don't watch that. Some of you guys, if you'll, if you'll listen to the Holy Spirit, he will give you a path. That's right. I don't listen to that. I said that. Guys, if you will live your life that way, like your convictions will speak for you mm. and you won't have to have a bunch of conversations. It's a good word. You just have to have the one conversation, you know, with people when you first are introduced and then you can just enjoy acquaintance, sitting at lunch with them, whatever may come up without having to like feel like you're compromised all the time. So but good. you have to say it. So good. If you wait to prepare... Too late. To say like no to a guy when they're this close to your face. <clears throat> Too late. Or when they got their hands in places Ooh. they don't need to be. If you wait in until Jesus a guy name. asks you for a naked picture of you, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. If a guy asks me for that, oh my gosh. Number one, I would tell everybody that I knew that he did that. <laughs> So good prayerfully, he word. would never do that again. Like, just, like, never do that again. Like, what are you actually thinking? Mm, that's a good word. Like, you're choosing to be a pervert. You're better than that. You're better than that. Better than that. Better than that. I would tell everybody. And then number two, I would not send it. Amen. Can I get an amen from the ladies? And the but you've got to decide that before. The fellas in this room don't do that. Amen. Can I get an amen from the fellas? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have truth. to decide how you're going to handle that. That's right. Before it comes up. Because then you're like, I didn't know. You don't touch yourself. Amen. You don't touch others. Amen. You don't look at other, you don't look at things that should be covered. Preach. Things that should be covered are covered for, for a, a reason. reason. Come on. Right? You don't send things. Amen. You don't hide things. If it has to be hidden, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. If it's not on the up and up, it's wrong. That's how you know. And you don't need to like go figure out what that means. I'm not going to apologize for telling you there's things that you need to stay away from because I'm concerned that you're going to go home and look them up. That's your own stupidity. Right. That's ridiculous. Who's yeah. just curious? I will move up, up higher. higher. I, I will move up higher. I set my sights only on him. And these things of earth, they grow strangely dim. You got to have your eyes Right. That's a good word. And this is what's stupid. And y'all aren't stupid. So this isn't you. Amen. That you come to church and you want the high life, mm. but you go out there and you make low level decisions. Mm. It's not going to happen. That's and right. I can't pray that out of you. Nobody can pray that out of you. That's right. And when you've seen a picture of what God wants to do in your life, he's shown you that, but that's not an automatic. It's still your job to get from point A to point B. And how do you get from where you are right now to the fullness of God's plan for your life? Obedience. Well, I know God's called me to do this and it's, no, it's not all going to happen. I know a lot of young people that knew that they were called to the plan of God and the purpose of God, knew they were called to the ministry, but from point A to point B, they got off track and they started fooling around with all kinds of nonsense. We have a friend in our past I mean, he wanted to be a pastor. He felt called of God to be a pastor. He would have been a great pastor. He had such a great heart for people. Such a great heart for people. But he didn't defend his choices from point A to point B. Started drinking. Started questioning creation. Right? And now he's not, he's not a pastor. He's borderline, not even in the faith, even though he was called. And Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says the gifts and callings of God are without that's repentance. Right. So when you, that's why we find out, like if you know you're called to the ministry, 
You better be walking the tightrope. That's right. Meaning and you better be sticking. If you're a boy, you better be following Pastor Greg. Amen. If you're a girl, you better be following me. Amen. You better be serving. You better be protecting your convictions. Yep. You mess around, marry somebody that doesn't want to be in the ministry. Hmm. Got this big soul tie because you guys have been friends your whole life, but your callings are different. Hmm. And so it doesn't last. Christians get divorced all the time. Just because you met in church doesn't mean everyone you meet in church isn't, doesn't mean that's the person for you. Right? That's why God gave Adam a job before he gave him a wife. Because guys, your purpose comes first. And if you don't protect your purpose, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, PC. I mean, Pastor Greg had a lot of like little girls that were like, ooh, I'm going to marry him. A uh. <laughs> couple of them told me, I'm like, and you ain't, girl. Like, you ain't. <laughs> they confided in you? Ugh. Like when we traveled, we would go to these camps. It was like every camp, there was at least one. <laughs> it was like the Lord told me. She's exaggerating. The Lord, I'm not exaggerating. The Lord told me that Pastor Greg is going to be my husband. <laughs> they would come to the altar and I'm the one to minister to them. And I liked him, but I hadn't vocalized it to anybody. I was wondering why when you were praying for him, you had your hands around their neck. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. Just kidding. So I, I did not do that, y'all. I was like, she was a faith champion, right? I'm like, care. That's like, if you think you her. can have him, great, give it a try. You know what I mean? He ain't looking at you, girl. But anyways, <laughs> so I would just pray for them that the eyes of their understanding would like be enlightened. <laughs> you know, like I already know, like he knows he means business with God. Mm -hmm. So he desires somebody that means business with God. Amen. Not just somebody that's pretty. Guys, in the day and age we live in, nobody has to be pretty. There's a surgery for everything. <laughs> but you don't like the way you look. You can change everything about yourself to end up looking the way that you want to look. Do you know what I'm saying? So pretty is easy. Anybody can be pretty. That is not, that is not hard. So you don't want somebody that just looks the part. You want somebody that's got like content. And the same for the girls. Well, they, they go to church. The guy that I crushed on that was going to church when I was in high school was growing weed in his closet. So he wasn't that serious about church is what you're saying? He was not serious about the Lord, you guys. He was serious about his weed business. He was serious I about pharmacia? Exactly. So guys, listen. You be serious so good. about your stand. And not just let this be a reminder not just to stand against alcohol, because some people, if they would have never taken the first sip, there would have never Facts. been a second. There would have never been a third. If they just never went to the party at all, you have to decide. Jeannie Mayo calls it pre-choice choices. choices. Write it down. Pre so as many choice. things as you can think about. So think about pre-choice choices. You make a decision before the opportunity to make the decision comes. Pre-choice choices. Laura talked about this, and for those of you that weren't here on, on Wednesday, she talked about when Evangelist Jonathan said, imagine if he only drank a little bit when his son died. Do you think he would have continued to only drink a little bit? Absolutely not. Even if he had maintained for all these years and was only just a social drinker, there's going to come a point when the pressure's on and that's the only foothold that the enemy needs. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. We don't dabble just a little bit. We don't play around with sin. Yeah. We don't play around with uh, the, these pitfalls of the enemy. We, we avoid them at all costs. Well, and w there was a man of God that you had a conversation with years ago. And he, w how did he say it? It's like, While you're thinking of that, there was a praise and worship leader in youth culture, went to all the youth camps when Pastor Greg and I were growing up, and he was amazing. And he wrote a lot of songs. I've even used some of the songs, like not, not by name, and you guys probably don't know them. But he started drinking. And guys, he ended up killing himself just like two years ago. It was like right around Corona. 
he, he just, and he's probably like, he's younger than my dad, but maybe like in his late fifties, early sixties. So he wasn't even that old and he took his life and literally everything began to unravel because he got to, to, he like got involved in a culture of believers who were okay with social drinking basically. Well, and that's kind of what this man of God was saying. He would have conversation with, with his friends in ministry who had large ministries. And when he would talk to them about alcohol being a problem, they would say, well, it's just, you know, we're just socially drinking. We're not getting drunk. There's no problem with it. But the conclusion that he was drawing was all of these ministries that have these uh, eventual pitfalls, these uh, eventual downfalls, you know, implosions, explosions, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you could trace it all back to that, that being present, being willing to make alcohol okay. And he was just, um, you know, kind of made a mental note. It's like, you, you could never convince me that it's not a problem. And even other, you know, whether it was immorality, it doesn't really matter what the, the issues that they faced were. It was like, when you call, the Bible says, if you don't call sin, sin, it will never yeah. depart from your house or from your life. So for us, we don't just say, uh, I was kind of having a problem. No, we call sin, sin. And we, as an act of our will, everyone gets to do this individually. We, we say, this is, according to the word of God, this is not okay. I judge it as wrong. I refuse to allow it in my life. It's only the doer of the word that gets results. Well, and honestly, I feel like you're going to experience more pressure outside of family. Family is probably the greatest place of pressure. But after that, the most pressure that you're going to experience is from carnal Christians. Mm. That's good. Carnal Christians. So true. We guys, we have Christian Christian friends in our life that that think they're we're not close. Do you understand? And we don't fellowship with them on a regular basis. But they they drink and they they always think that we are down. Do you know what I mean? They obviously don't know us very well. Or they think that they can like wear us down. (laughs) Maybe they do. It's not happening. Not no. But hell no. I'm not 40 years old without alcohol and all of a sudden need to be free. I'm already free. It's not freeing. I don't have pressure. Amen. I don't have pressure. The greater one lives on the inside of me. I know how to have fun. I have peace that's indescribable. So this is what my challenge is for you guys. We're going to go through our notes. Talk a little bit more. Make sure that you have them. Give you a chance to sign. But next week in your small groups, you guys are going to begin to build your own personal testimony in your own personal stand. Not just in the way of alcohol. But how are you going to answer a guy that asks you out? How are you going to answer a guy that asks you for your number? You know what I mean? Like, Pastor Faith just just got, you know, she's getting a rental car at Enterprise. She was like, I hate having to do this stuff. I wish Greg was here. She's always calling Pastor Greg. She calls him Greg. You know what I mean? So she's just innocently getting the rental car. And honestly, y'all, I already knew. I just already kind of knew. I was like, this is going to, this isn't going to, I know how this is going to go. He was like, hey, I don't remember how he said it. But he basically was like, let me give you my number or something like that. And his coworker, she was like, what? And he was like, well, I'm just saying like something about wanting to go to the beach. Beach with her. Want to go to the beach with her. And she was oh like, my Lord. she's like, um, I'm here to go to church. And he was like, I need some of that too. <laughs> this guy was not. He's got some pretty good lines. No, for an answer. I He's also smooth. need church. He's smooth, you know? <laughs> and like, it's not going to go away is what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you're going to continue. This is not like, well, if I can just get through high school and hold on. No. How many young people do I know that held on to their virginity until the summer after their senior year? Right. And it was like, you just all right. I'm just like, everybody. What, what? what happened to the last one? <laughs> what is going on? You know what I'm saying? So this is like a stand that you take forever, right? We're already out of high school. No one's inviting us to the party, but yet you still have people that are like, oh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, buddies you meet at the gym, people, you know, people that you work with, you know, women at work. Well, let's just have a little wine. You know what I'm saying? Like your moms probably have experienced that. Right. If they work in the, in the marketplace. Right. And they're mad at Pastor Dean and all of us here at Choose Live because we're, 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 what, it, what would it be like? We're putting a damper on their fun or whatever. 
Raining on their parade? Raining on their parade. Perfect. Perfect analogy. You know, Annette's eyebrows, she's like, what? Do you know what I'm saying? No, this is what the Bible says. This isn't what we say. Throwing this a is, wet blanket on their fire. <laughs> this is what the Bible says. So, next week, small group, you're, you're writing your testimony. Okay, then the following week, we'll do like three a week where they get up and say, you get up and say it. And then it's forever going to be marked into history on the, you, what, on the YouTube. Like on the YouTube. Say, on, on the YouTube. The YouTube. It's going to be on the YouTube, you standing up and giving your stand. Okay? So Don't next be nervous. week. Next week you write it. Next week you build it. Your small group leaders are going to help you. And y'all develop questions for them. What are you going to do when, when this happens? What are you going to do when you're tempted with this? What are you going to do about this? What are you going to do when somebody asks you to steal? The Bible says that we are to be ready to give an answer. And so this is not about your yeah. public speaking ability. No. This is about you knowing in your heart why you believe what you believe, why you Amen. stand for what you stand for. Because when it gets resolved on the inside of you and you are determined that this is what I stand for, then you're already empowered when you go out into this world and yeah. the temptation comes. Just like Pastor Faith. Do you think that she's going to like fall for this dude's game? Even though it's like, hey, you can't, can't fault him for trying, but it's like she's not going to be like flattered like that somebody would yeah. find her attractive and like fall for that. Why? Because she's resolved. Right? She knows what she wants. She knows what her standards are. That's what you guys are doing is you're going to be able to stand up here and articulate why it is that you stand for what you stand for. Why it is that well, you believe And when you, believe. you don't take that stand, it's like you leave the door open for the enemy. Like, oh. so, like, like girls, which you talk a lot about that with the guys. But like for girls too, like you have to guard a guy's heart. You can't keep being friends with him when you have no intention. And that's why you don't do things privately. That's why we don't do private texts, private talking, because that develops intimacy and it, it develops exclusivity. And the reality is you like the attention, but you're not interested. Uh, obviously, you know better than to pick your life partner as an eighth grader. Now, I'm not saying there haven't been people who have done that. But guys, so many people that have done that did not know what you know right now. They didn't have a youth group. And even if you grow up in church sitting like, you know, three sections away from each other, it's not the time for that. Even if that person is kind of highlighted in your life, it's not the time. And you deceive your parents, you trick your parents and making it like we're just friends. And then they get like all crunchy. We're not in their life because they know better. Like they're not going to tell me that. Uh, you know, coincidentally, we, we end up on the outskirts of their life. We broke them up. It was our fault. It wasn't their illicit sex outside of marriage. Fornication. It was us. Y'all, I'm cool, but I ain't that cool. <laughs> to be everybody's problem. Pastor you know Jerry, you are very wow. Cool. wow. 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 Guys, I love you, and I want you to know the truth. Amen. Okay? I want you to know the truth. But Amen. you have to take you have to take a stand. Yep. And you it starts with your testimony. Yeah. And then everything in your life begins to defend that. And you let people like hold you accountable. Ooh. You let people be like, hey. Good old fashioned accountability. I feel like you. Hey, remember when like, you shared your testimony and you said you wanted to serve God all the days of your life? Why do you morph into this totally different person when that boy's around? Ooh. Or why are you, why are you hitting that girl up like that? Like Ooh. that's not guarding her heart. Whatever the situation is. You both like the attention. You need to go pray in the Holy Ghost. You have the Father's undivided attention. Amen. He will speak to you. He will help you. Go talk to, go win the lost. Go win souls. If you want somebody's attention, go win souls. Amen. Such accountability is such a powerful thing. Let's, yeah. The Bible says iron sharpens, sharpens iron. iron. So one person sharpens the countenance of their friend. Which means when your friend calls you out, you have a decision. Am I going to be offended and be like, eh, why are you hating on me? And then try and think of nine things that they did wrong. Or you just be like, you right. You right. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I did act different. I, I was acting up. I shouldn't be. You, you appreciate the fact that they love you enough to tell you the truth. Otherwise, you can be like other people who remove themselves from people who they know will hold them accountable. So if you're, if you're that person that holds your friend accountable and then they, all of a sudden they become distant, that's their choice. 
They have distanced themselves from you because you're willing, you love them enough to tell them the truth. So don't be butthurt. Don't be offended by that. They, they made a choice and they've chosen to remove themselves from a safe place. The Bible says, one who isolates themselves rages against all wisdom. We've seen it play out time and time again. Somebody gets called out for they're acting up. They're acting a fool. They're doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. A, a, a Christian friend, a brother or sister in Christ corrects them or calls them on it and all of a sudden they become distant. They remove themselves. That is so unwise. And what do you think happens to that person who removes themselves from wise counsel, who removes themselves from accountability? It's only a matter of time before they stumble and fall. So don't be that person. Be someone who has cultivated humility to know that my friends love me and they care about me. And when they confront me on something, I need to be humble enough to evaluate, is what they're saying true? And when you find out it's true, then you humble yourself and you say, you're right. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Amen. I think to segue into the notes, let's, do we have a picture of um, angel eggs and deviled ham. Okay. Finally, so, she's been waiting. She's Jenna, been I did so... it. Got your back. Okay. These are angel oh, eggs. Have you guys had we those? You eggs. guys like those? Everyone except Raise for your hand if you hater. think they're gross. Whoa. One, you think they're gross, right? Why aren't you raising your hand? Two, kind of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Raise your More hand if me. you've never had them. If you've never had these eggs. Why did you raise your hand they're gross if you've never had them? They're totally trending right now you didn't? in restaurants. Are you sure? Awesome. Because you had your hand like this. I witnessed your faith. Okay, oh, let's take a look bracelet. at deviled okay. ham. Deviled ham. Ooh. You've had it. Did you like it? Yeah, I did. He said it's good. The only ham I like is bacon. Okay, Ooh. so guys, write this down. Write this down. My victory is in the blood. My victory is in the and blood. And my victory is in my mouth. So your victory is in the blood and your victory is in your mouth. And then we'll give you the blanks for these. Service is wrapping up. My victory is in the blood. And my victory, my victory is in, is my, in mouth. my mouth. <laughs> All right. They are an altar call in the main service, so I encourage you guys to um, listen to this message again and fill this in. If you bring it back next week filled in, you'll get a free drink Ooh. from the cafe. Don't be copying so your don't friends. Don't copy the Lord your friend. Knows. You've got to actually listen to the message. If you bring it back next week filled in, you will get, we won't keep it from you. Um, you can take it back. We will give you a free drink coupon. Okay. Were you guys encouraged today? Are you excited Praise about making your pre-choice choice choices and getting your testimony together? We love you guys very much, and we want you to win in life. That's why we tell you the truth strong. Hey, sweetheart, what's up? All right, put all of your papers away. Pass your clipboards this way. Hey.